Okay, what I'm going to try and do in this video is cover some of the things that uh, were raised as issues in how to use InDesign um, from this list here. And we're going to start with the general setup and um, how to create a new document and um, what did it say? Basics, the basics. So, um, InDesign is part of a suite of software from a company called Adobe and it also includes Dreamweaver for web design and Fireworks which they're phasing out now sadly for graphics. Photoshop that you're familiar with, Illustrator is also a graphics program and InDesign. There are others also Flash as well, you've seen Flash games on, online. Um, and unlike Photoshop, in InDesign you get a space to work in and fill. When you use Photoshop to edit a photo, you're working with an object. The photo is an object and you don't go off the edge of it because there is no way off the edge of it. You have a thing that you're working on. On InDesign, what you've got is a representation of a blank piece of paper that you're trying to fill with your own ideas. And that, that is quite different. And it's possibly what's confusing some people because you, you don't get much help to start off with. When you have a photo on there, you can see what you want to do with the photo. You want to maybe take the scratches out. <coughs> With a blank piece of paper, it stares back at you and you're thinking, what do I do? Well, the first thing you do is you set up your workspace in terms of putting in margins and columns and things like that. So the structure starts to take shape and it's no longer blank. So I'm going to start up a new document. And I'm going to make it, as you will, A4, which is here. Letter is an American size. We don't do that here. B5 is a different scale, different proportion. Um, and as I think you know, A5, if you double the size you get A4, and if you double the size again you get A3. So A4, and we'll have it or, uh, portrait and orientation. Um, I'm going to put three columns in, because why not? <coughs> Excuse me. Margins, um, I'm going to take right down to 5mm. You can see how because this chain button is pressed down, they all move together. If I unchain them, I can change them separately. Um, and I had um, I had more options on automatically because I always use them, but I'll put as as I suggested to you a bleed of three mil in, so that um, anything we take over the edge can work. So we hit OK on that, and here is now it's gone off the bottom of the recording a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, here is now a, a representation of a piece of paper, and on this piece of paper you will put your your design elements. And everything you can see on screen at the moment will be invisible when you print it out. The columns, the borders, the bleed obviously is off the edge of the page. Um, these are here to help you and they are here to guide you. Um, but you put in the ones that are useful to you and you take out the ones that aren't. Um, and what you can also do is you can put in uh, temporary guides by dragging out of the ruler a line. And if you do need to align things, um, these guides are a little bit sticky. You put an, uh, an item near it and it jumps to it and they help you get things level or they help you block off a piece of space on the, if, if you wanted to do one story of a news layout on the top third of the page and one off the top bottom two thirds you'd put a guide in to help you see the difference um, and you can of course also put a vertical guide in if you need it now that is basically how you set up a document and if you're in InDesign and you want to do another one you do file I know it's off the top of the recording sorry uh, new document even if you're making a book, a book is a different thing in InDesign. Documents, and then you get that screen up again, and you can do an A5 landscape if you want, or whatever. Um, intent to print is quite important. Um, you don't want to get mucking around with doing things that looks a bit like a web, web page, but it's also important because colours work differently. Um, if your columns are too close together for your taste, gutter is where you change that. And if you wish, oh heavens, I wish I'd done columns when I set up, you then have the option under layout to pick margins and columns where you can change these things again. You can increase the number of columns for a great deal if you wish. Um, you can increase the space between them, lay up in the gutter. Can't remember what it was, let's put it back to five mil, I don't know. Five mil's a nice space. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you can change the margins again if you wish. I'm only checking they're not chained together, are they? Right. Um, now I gave you this massive warning saying margins will kill you um, and so nobody put margins in and then you struggled because you had text at the end, edge of the page, my fault. Margins are bad, bad, bad if you're using your column structure to put pictures and things like that to the edge of the page because um, then your columns aren't even. 
if you want to put text in and things like that, then you do kind of need a bit of a margin between your work and the edge of the page. Um, that's your basic setup. And I think rather than make one long mega monster video, I'm going to stop here and then do a new video for the next things, except one. Um, you did ask as well about um, backgrounds and uh, things like that, although it was kind of a wish for, to know a bit more about it. But for those I didn't speak to individually, if you want to do the whole page a complete color, there isn't some magic change the page color button. What you do is you draw a big box and color the box and make sure it stays at the back. So over here to the most used tool, the rectangle frame tool, take it from the corner of the bleed because the whole point of the bleed is to make sure that um, all this stuff actually does go to the edge of the page even if the print is a bit offset. Come across here to the color palette which does look a little bit different on the PC but um, I think it's in this lot. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be in there. Uh, I'm, I'm on a Mac here if you hadn't worked it out. Um, and then you just pick your colour from the colour dropper. It's a bit violent, it's a bit dull. It doesn't matter what colour does it. Um, have you said that? There's got to be a good colour in here somewhere. That'll do. Um, so you've now got a background, but if you put other things on there, as you do more and more work, you'll find you accidentally drag it. So um, you can lock it. This looks you can lock it with um, up in the top menu there's an option called object and there is lock ah there we go that's what I was looking for and now there's a little padlock there and now that won't move um, and if you need to you can just click on it to unlock it and then it will move so um, there are, are, are the basics the basic setup what it is what you're trying to do and also how if you want to you can have oh, colored page and I'll stop here for this one.